If you've been using one of these, the X-Rite Color Checker Passport, and you've been using Lightroom Classic, then you know that to build a profile for this, you had a plugin that you simply ran the photo of this passport through, and that created the profile for you. However, if you're using Lightroom CC now, as I am, there is no plugin architecture, so you no longer have access to the plugin to make the profile. You can still do it. It's just a manual process, takes a few steps, so I'm gonna show you how. The process to do this is actually quite easy. It just requires several steps. First, you have to export the raw file from Lightroom CC and convert that to a DNG. And then you take the DNG and run that through the X-Rite software, which generates the profile, and then you import the profile into Lightroom CC. That's all there is to it, really. But let me show you exactly how. This is a shoot that I did for a client's product, and of course, we want to make sure that the product colors are totally accurate. So to do that, we photograph the X-Rite Color Checker Passport. Now the first step is going to be to export the picture, so I'll go to the File, Save To menu, and you want to make sure this is set to Original Plus Settings, and you want to save this not to the desktop itself, but to a folder on the desktop. If you save it to the desktop itself, the next step, the DNG conversion, actually wants to look at a folder, and then you'll end up looking at everything on your desktop. So just create a folder at this stage, it makes it a little bit easier. I'll create a new folder on the desktop called DNG, and save that. Next I'll open the DNG converter. Click on Select Folder, select that folder that we created in the previous step, and click Convert. You don't actually have to change any of the settings. The default settings for everything here is totally fine. It's going to create that DNG in the same location as the RAW file was. The next step is to go to the Color Checker Camera Calibration software, and all you have to do here is just drag and drop this picture in. The software will actually look at the picture, look for that Color Checker Passport, and draw its grid around it, isolating all the colors and doing all the work for you. It's really simple. You can see here that it has located the color grids. It's drawn this square around it, and each one of those little green squares is lined up over the color squares in the passport. Now, if for some reason it didn't get it right or it didn't get it at all, you can create one manually. You would simply click on this arrow here and then start clicking on the four corners of the passport. And if you needed to readjust this for any reason, you can simply grab the corner and move it around. Click on Create Profile. And at this point, it's gonna to wanna to save it to the camera profiles location. Now, this is fine if you were using it inside of Lightroom Classic or even inside of Photoshop, but this is a location that is deep inside of the application support folder in your library, which is where those other Adobe apps are gonna be looking for it. Lightroom CC isn't gonna be looking for it there. So I'm just gonna save it to the desktop, which will make it easier to import into Lightroom CC later. We'll go ahead and save that. Profile has been created successfully. And now, back over to Lightroom. Open the editor. At the top under Profile, where it says by default Adobe Color, click on the Profile Gallery. And then from the three dots menu here, choose Import Profiles. There's the profile I just created on the desktop. Click Import. And that's it. Now it's been imported. Next, I need to apply it to this photo. And the cool thing about the way profiles are applied in here is you'll see it as you roll the mouse over it. So it makes it really easy to see the before and after. It's gonna show up under a category called Profiles, and here's the one that I just created. And you'll see as I run the mouse over this back and forth, the difference that the color profile is making. Look at the purples and the blues specifically. Those are having the biggest change. Go ahead and click it to apply it permanently, and then you can back out of the profile window. The next step is to do a custom white balance. Now, odds are, if you went as far as shooting a color checker passport, you also did a custom white balance in camera before you shot this, so you know that you have perfect white balance. But if you didn't, or if you just want to double check it, you can create a white balance in the software using these colors on here. Now, here's the really cool thing about this. Let's just say that my white balance was completely off. Like I shot this at 2000 degrees Kelvin for some reason. If I then took that completely wrong white balance photo, ran it through the same process we just did, it's not going to adjust the white balance. The color profile ignores the white balance completely. So it doesn't actually matter what the white balance was when you shot it when you create the profile. You're still gonna get an accurate profile, and then at this stage in the game, you can go ahead and create a perfect white balance. To do that, I would go to my white balance selector, grab the eyedropper, and then click on one of the neutral white balance squares. But before I do that, notice the white balance that came out of the camera, 5500 and plus 27 tint. I go and I click on that white balance tool, and it has just barely changed it, 5450 to plus 25. In fact, if I click on a few different places within that square, you're gonna see those numbers changing ever so slightly no matter where I click. There's always gonna be a tiny, tiny bit of variation. 
but it's fine. Now I'm ready to copy the color profile and the white balance that I applied to this photo to all the other photos in the shoot. To do that, you'd go to the three dots menu over here and you could choose copy edit settings, which is gonna copy all of the edit settings. And at this point, all we've done is change the white balance and the profile, so that's fine. But if you wanna make sure you're only copying what you need, go to choose edit settings to copy or hit shift command C. And then from here, you'll see there's the profile selected with a bunch of other stuff potentially selected as well. So I'll go ahead and choose none, re-enable the profile, and then under color, enable white balance and hit copy. And now those settings are copied to the clipboard and I can paste them to all the other photos at once. To do that, you have to get out of this view, tap the G key to go into the grid view, and I'll just hit command A to select all of these images and then command V to paste. And you see there it says paste edit settings to 95 photos and that is now being applied to all the pictures. If you wanna see the difference of what one of these would look like, let's go ahead and open up one of these of Simeon, our little monkey here. There's the photo with the correct profile applied to it. And if I wanna see what the original would look like, there's the difference. And you can see it's actually pretty dramatic. The blue in the shirt has changed quite a bit. The skin tone on the doll has changed a bit. This looks much more accurate and this is what I wanna to send to my client. Now, one more thing I wanna tell you, since this is gonna sync across Adobe Cloud to all of your devices, you will have this custom color profile on your iPhone, your iPad, or any other computer you're using it on. Right, let's take a look. I'll go ahead and launch Lightroom and there's the shoot that we're in. There's the studio shoot selection. There's the picture of the color checker passport. You'll see down on the bottom, there's my profiles. And from here, I have access to all the profiles that were installed. There's profiles and there's the one that I just brought in, S1 Earth Monkey. And that's all there is to it. If you like what you saw today, please hit that like button. If you like me and the videos that I do, please subscribe. We'll see you next time.